Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Fernando with Texas United Realty and United Real Estate, uh, one of the mentors. Uh, and I just wanted to welcome you. Uh, we are having this uh, webinar uh, recorded for later playback. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, so I don't know if some of you are, are, are aware, but there's been some updated contract forms that were effective July 8th, 2022, that we need to must we must start using uh, that's real critical uh, so i'm going to show you how to find these forms and uh, that they're mandatory so we must use them so if you have anything that's going on that's starting now uh, make sure that the revision date is july 8th on some of these forms so uh, another thing is i don't know if you guys are aware how to find these forms now typically we have them in dot loop which I've already confirmed that we've updated dot loop. Uh, Zip forms also has the latest and transaction desk should have the latest. But one thing that you guys need to be aware of is sometimes when you have create your own templates, your own personal templates, those um, documents might not be updated. So you need to make sure that they are uh, updated and you might have to replace them. So what I'm gonna do is do a demo on uh, showing you how to go to to these forms that you can look at uh, you can go to texasrealestate.com so when you go into texasrealestate.com you're gonna, if, you're not, um, if you're not familiar with or if you've never logged in um, to this website you're going to have to register um, and uh, and it's easy to register once you register, then you can access either the four realtor members or for buyer seller renters too. But we typically use the red box here for realtor members. Just click on that. And in order to go to forms, you would go to this legal uh, and ethics section. And we're gonna talk first about the form changes. So you can click on this form changes here. And then there's three different um, categories, the new forms, forms under revision, and adopted form changes. And this is the one we're going to be focusing on now. So let's see what, what got changed or what forms were changed. So this section here says adopted form revisions, uh, stated July 8, 2022. And these are all the forms that were uh, affected, uh, are in effect with the updated changes for July 8th. You also see other history like September 1st and, and then other sections. But the ones that you need to be um, aware of is this section here. And you can see that the exclusive right to sell um, got changed, exclusive right to lease. So if we do a lot of leases or we are listing agents, uh, those forms got changed and updated and we must start using those going forward. Uh, farm and ranch. Also, there's some, a few commercial. The seller's disclosure, that one got updated as well. Uh, the buyer rep agreement got updated. Uh, the buyer's walkthrough got updated. A residential lease agreement got updated. So there's a lot, a lot of forms that got updated. So your responsibility as an agent is to ensure that you have the latest and greatest uh, revision, because if not, when you submit the paperwork to contract compliance, uh, and we're gonna this that it's not the latest and greatest. We're probably gonna tell you to that you're gonna have to fix that because you're not trade compliant no more, and that's gonna be a major headache. So let me just give you an example. When you go in here into this form, uh, we call this one the red line form, where they you can see what changed. Of course, this says draft version, but it's already it's already ready to go. I just wanted to give you an example. So when you go here, you'll, you'll see what, what changed. They might have uh, replaced a word. Uh, they added a, a few lines. And you can, kind of, you can tell here what has changed by, you, by this red uh, verbiage that you see on the contract. Like, for example, here they added the PID disclosure notice. And then they had to re redo these um, different paragraphs and assignments. So that's just one example. Uh, if you look at the seller's disclosure, here it is. You can see that in the seller's disclosure. Oh, 
Let's see. Yeah, here it is. So this one, they what well, one major thing that they did is they removed the this fourteen fourteen form that we used to have to attach. So they removed all this um, different um, um, statements regarding the fourteen fourteen form that it must be there, but they moved it over here. And what they decided to do is to say, if buyers concern about these matters, buyer may consult information about uh, about flood hazards using the form TXR 1414. So that's change. And another thing, if you want to know the dates, if you're in, uh, if you're if you have the correct date, down here at the bottom of every page is going to say the date. It'll say 7 8 2022. So then they'll tell you that you are using the latest and greatest. Okay. Um, the residential lease. This one, they added a paragraph 4B. They removed some things here. So a few things. So uh, this, this says draft mode, but it's already uh, in effect. If you want to see what they looked like, uh, here on this um, same screen, you can click on this legal and ethics and click on forms. And here's this says blank forms downloaded. So you can click on that. One thing that I like, I, I use this quite a bit actually. And one thing that I like about this is that you can sort this by uh, revision date. If you click on the revision date, it shows you everything that is um, with the latest and greatest light. So all these forms are July 8th, sorted by July 8th. And then you'll see the next one that says April 1st, 2022. Then that, that changed and was updated. So this is real helpful for you to go in here and look. And this is the actual real forms, okay? So it, 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 it no longer says draft mode anymore, okay? Uh, one thing I also wanted to show y'all that um, that I uh, was looking at is um, uh, let's see form changes. We already did that. View new forms. Oh, that's that's about it. Um, is any other any anybody have any questions regarding these forms? Uh, I just got here. How, how do I have yep. to sign in to yes. Texas Realtors? Uh, yes. I don't even think I have the password for that. Oh my goodness. No, well, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't have the password or you forgot, you can always say forgot password. Or if you never registered, you can register. Okay. And this this so uh, this is a real helpful website. I use this quite a bit to find out what forms. Um, uh, you know, like if I'm looking for a certain form, let's just say that, uh, and I like to use the control F on my Windows computer uh, to do a find. So let's just say that you were gonna do, um, you're doing a, you wanna see the third party financing. I would type in the word third and then do search and then there it is, third party financing. Or if you know the form number too, you can do a search of the form number. <clears throat> And that pops up the form number. So, so this, this is real, this is real helpful for that. All this form are, are the, the new uh, rever uh, the new forms that have been updated by track. Correct. And you can tell by this revision date here. If you click on revision date, you see how it goes in ascending or descending order. So this is the latest, July 8, July 8. These are all the forms that have been updated about 12 days ago. Okay. And you must use these forms. If you turn in an old form, um, then and we receive it in contract compliance, we're probably going to push it back because it's no longer compliant. Okay. Okay. Now, if you did some, if you did a transaction before July eighth, let's just say you did one July seventh or July sixth, you don't have to update those forms. I mean, you do have the opportunity to update them if, if you can. But if the transaction that you started is before July 8th, then you're okay. But after July 8th, it's probably gonna be a problem. Okay. Okay. So that's one thing that you really gotta be careful with. 
Okay. Now, another thing that uh, this section has, which I really like, is these list of forms and form description and references. And these forms and, and descriptions and references kind of tell you explicitly what each form does and a little bit of brief, uh, brief description. So it's real helpful, especially for new agents. Uh, another thing is this list of forms. I like to use this one too, because it tells you in, in, um, in numerical order, all the forms and when the revision dates were applied. And what type is it? Is it a residential or commercial or farm and ranch? So I would suggest you save this on your computer and just so you can kind of see which revision uh, you're supposed to be using before you submit an offer. Or but the revision offer. documents are already in like dot loop and stuff, right? Correct. But the problem is sometimes if you have, if you create a template a personal template in zip forms, transaction desk, or dot loop, because you can, it gives you the ability to create your own template. You may have the old version because dot loop will not update your template. It will only update templates that we have set up. And what Amy Skinner was doing is she was manually making sure that they were updated as far as our templates that we use, but your template is not gonna be updated. So that's one thing you gotta be careful with. So all the forms um, in dot loop are all not updated or? They are, they are updated, yes. Okay. But I'm just saying, if you create your own personal template, okay. it will not be updated. That's one thing you need to be careful with. Okay. In order to find out, like I said, you can click, you can print this list of, 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 um, of uh, contracts, or you can go to um, search blank forms. What I usually do, uh, what I've done in my computers, I save this as a favorite. That way I can do, like if I say, oh, I wonder if the seller's disclosure was updated, I can do a control F. Oh, let me see if it works. Control F. I can type seller's disclosure or just seller. And there it is, seller's disclosure. It says the date is July 8th. And if I look at my form that I have on my computer on transaction desk or dot loop or zip forms, and it doesn't say July 8th on it, then I'm not going to use it. Now, if you guys do notice something in dot loop that's not updated, please let us know immediately. You see down here, it tells you the revision date. Okay. Every contract will say that. Like if I do this amendment to listing, it's dated 2004, it's gonna say 2004. See that? So it's your responsibility as an agent to always ensure that you have the latest and greatest document. It's your responsibility, okay? Because I know you guys don't want to hear from contract compliance, oh, you're not in compliance and you have to redo this contract or fix it somehow. All right. Any questions, other questions on the importance of this? Why do they keep, why do they keep re revising the, the forms? Well, typically, typically what happens whenever there's revisions is because there's a lawsuit. Mm. And you know how in the United States, we love to sue. Sue, sue, sue. <laughs> yes. So whenever there's lawsuits or, trek compl or there might be a TREC complaint against an agent or several agents. And then TREC will say, oh, man, uh, they're always arguing about paragraph 5B. Let's let's fix it because I'm getting sick and tired of attorneys getting involved. If we if we would stop suing each other, then we probably wouldn't be updating our our track forms as much. 
seems like every other year they they revising sometimes yeah and even the title companies too i remember when we used to close at a house for a title company it used to be only 30 documents now it's 49 documents and why is that because there was a lawsuit problem wow Welcome to the United States. <laughs> Good question, though. Any other questions? So, guys, this is very, very important. You have to make sure that you have the latest and greatest. I, there's a lot of documents that changed. I'm thinking 22 or so. Let's see, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, it's about 20. No, it's probably 30. It's about 30 documents that have changed. So they changed the four families, the four, uh, the four families also? Uh, no, they changed the exclusive right to sell, exclusive right to uh, lease on the commercial side as well, the seller's disclosure, the buyer rep agreement, buyer's walkthrough, residential lease, residential lease application, early termination of uh, a bed bug addendum. So there's several here, but no, not the one to four, no. The one to four was just updated at the beginning of the year. I thought right. so too. And the other year they, they, they kind of- Yeah, the, I can tell when the one to four was updated. Uh, it was updated November 8th, 2021. Yeah, I thought so too, because I took my class and they revised something on there. So this website, this texasrealestate.com is really helpful for all of us because you can tell when something was updated. I've seen in my experience, sometimes when I'm looking at contract compliance files, I'll see somebody turning in a seller disclosure for, uh, you know, like 2014 and I'm going, what? You know, it should be 2019. So I don't understand why, I mean, it has nothing to do with us, but it's another agent from another brokerage. And I'm going, why is the seller's disclosure so old? So you, you guys, whenever are doing any uh, contract offers or reviewing a contracts or you're the listing agent, whatever it is, don't assume that the other agent knows what they're doing. If you notice, uh, that the revision is not the right one, immediately tell the buyer agent or the listing agent that that's wrong. You're not TREC compliant and please submit a latest and greatest TREC form. Try to catch it early instead of later. Do we, can we not accept um, older forms from other agents? You can accept them and you still have to uh, show them to uh, your clients as an offer, but you need to inform the, the other side that they must uh, use an updated form. So before the transaction goes farther, they have to do that. Correct. Thank you. But you are still responsible to present it. That's not client. a problem. Good question. Good question, Dina. So we're obligated to always present the offer, but we need to notify the seller or the buyer that that TREC form is no longer uh, compliant. That's your disclosure when you do the presentation. Okay. Good question. Any other questions, guys? So um, just so a recap, just go to texasrealestate.com. Real if, you, if you're not a member yet, uh, yet you can always go to uh, log in and create an account. Or if you forgot your password, you can do forget, forgot your password. When you create the account, you type in your license number and make sure here it says, if you're using a Trek license number, it says to make sure you add the zero in front of it. Or if not, it's not gonna work. Of course, you have to have an active license. Okay. Really? I thought 
Anybody can just go on there. No. Well, they can if they're a, a consumer. So for example, um, they, they can click on this side for buyers, sellers, and renters. You see that? Uh -huh. So the buyers, sellers, and renters can go on this, on this side, but you as a realtor can go on the red side. Okay. So consumer can, can't just go. No, off. because they don't have a Trek license. Okay. I thought they can just go pull up some forms or something. They can always Google forms. So they you know, can't? You can always Google forms. You can go into Google and type seller's disclosure and it's gonna pop up too, but it may be harder to get, you know, a copy of. So I thought, so anybody can just go pull up some forms. Yeah, track forms are public, but the only ones that can use them are realtors. You see there where he was showing that if you go Google it, Right there, you have to put in your name or license number to get in to get it. Right. Really, I'm, I'm on it right now. I didn't. I just uh, log on and put my well, my password and my email, and I didn't have to put my. They already yeah. recognized me. I didn't have to yeah. put my license. Yeah, number. but probably because you're already logged in. Yeah. So well, what I'm saying is, I thought. So anybody can just go pull up forms or? Yes, yes, but, but remember what the forms say. The forms always say that it must be filled in by a realtor. Oh, gotcha. It actually always says it at the top of the forms. If you uh, look at the top portion of the documents, it's gonna say, uh, must be a member of, let me show you. Every form says that. See right here, it says use of this form by persons who are not members of Texas Association of Realtors is not authorized. I thought so, because, you know, there's a lot of investor out there that's. Yeah, what it, what some people do uh, is they'll, they'll do a white out. They use like a white out and they'll white all this stuff out. Huh, is that legal? Well, I mean, They're not I don't know. I don't know if Texas realtors will get mad at them or not. I have no idea. <laughs> That's not legal. Why can't they get their license to do that stuff? But you see how it says here, use of this form by persons who are not members of Texas Association of Realtors is not authorized. Right, right. So that to me would say that if you weren't a realtor with a license that this isn't a completely legal document. Correct. Now they can always, uh, they can always hire an attorney to write it up for them. That's fine. But we as realtors, we have to use these trick forms that are written for us. Right. Okay. Good to know. Good questions. Any other questions, guys? Thank you, Fernando. Have a good yeah. weekend. Yes, thank you. Uh, uh, and, uh, and I don't know if anybody's uh, watching the Astros, uh, <laughs> but the, the score is five uh, Houston to New York, just so everybody knows. <laughs> uh, no. Thank you, Dina. Uh, any other questions, guys? Oh, I think there's a chat. Oh, no, they just say thank you. Okay. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for your time. This is being recorded anyway, uh, so y'all can uh, later uh, play it back. Okay. Thank you, Fernando. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Good evening, and uh, have a good weekend.